Welcome to Uptown Rumble, Heavy Music in the Bronx. Today is Tuesday, August 13th, 2024. My name is Stephen Payne, Director of the Bronx County Historical Society, and I'm here for uh, more oral history um, with uh, someone who needs no introduction in the Bronx scene, um, Gigi Cano uh, uh, of many, many bands. Um, those of you who have already watched some oral histories, um, you can watch the Proof of Purchase one, which Gigi features very prominently in. Um, but today, um, Gigi's going to share more details about um, her own life, her own development as a musician, um, and uh, and we'll see uh, um, see what all Gigi shares. So, Gigi, um, before you know, we get into your own life. Let's spend some more time. We were just talking before I pressed record about. Um, uh, your ancestors. Let's spend some more time um, dealing with that part of your life because obviously our ancestors are such a huge part of what makes us us. So um, why don't you share some more about your ancestors, particularly if you want your your grandmother and, and mother, um, uh, rest in peace, who just recently passed. Um, this... They, they both just passed. So it's like, um, I've been forced to kind of do some serious work and, you know, and, and, and I've always been, I always do serious work, you know, um, in a sense of, of mind, body, spirit connection with myself and, you know, and, and my surroundings. Um, but I've been on this journey for the last couple of years of just really like doing some ancestral healing. And and throughout this journey, you know, I come across the passing of my grandmother and all of what comes out of the closet now that she's not here to protect it. And and um and the passing of my mother a couple of weeks later after that and understanding the life and death cycle of just who I am and where I come from, you know, and and uh, and where I'm going. <laughs> Absolutely. Which is up to me to create, understanding that freedom that they, you know, didn't have or were unaware of because of, you know, our beautiful programmed world, <laughs> so to say. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you know much about your your grandma's childhood and where and how she grew up? You know, that's, th those are the things that, that bother me because not much, you know, yeah. we know that she was Puerto Rican. We know that, that she, that she had a pale sister. Um, not sure what that's about. Um, we, uh, I, well, not we, I'm, I'm saying we, but I'm not talking about, me right sure. uh, in that sense um i know that uh there was you know there's the mix of the african and there's the mix of the taino indian in in her you know um i am aware that my mom before passing placed well spread her mother's my grandmother's ashes on her mother's grave on my great grandmother's grave Never met my great grandmother. Don't know really much about it. I would love to know more about it. So I'm trying to get more in touch with my aunt and, you know, and that side of the family again. So that way we can like kind of put these pieces of the puzzle together and really understand what it is that we come from to know sure. where we're going and how we want to continue, you know? You and know... so, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, well, yeah, just and and so you know that work is you know all of that from grandma's land is being unveiled and is 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 creating a lot of deep healing you know and then you know understanding why mom was the way she was <laughs> was is also you know um, a product of that time and you know and how grandma was was a product of her time you know sure and how I have become is a product of you know my mom's time. Absolutely. Do you know where where in Puerto Rico your family has the deepest roots? Maybe there's multiple places. 
Um, they're uh, mainly, mainly, uh, my mom was born in Ponce, but for the most part, they lived in Guayanilla, which is in the south. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. And I'm guessing, is that where your, your great grandmother's grave is? Yes, yes. I well, I'm see. not sure if it's in Ponce or in Guayanilla. I never asked. Okay, okay, okay. I see. Yeah. This was one of the last conversations I had with mom. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I guess, I guess you mentioned trying to get in touch with an aunt. You, do you have family, um, other family kind of that you could get in touch with and that you know of and uh, that still live kind of where your mom grew up, where your grandma lived? Uh, her cousins, her cousins, but I don't really have much of a relationship with them. I always felt like they kind of manipulated her a little bit or maintained her never empowered her rather and and kept her more as a uh you know as a help <laughs> as yeah. a you know, you know so i never really cared too much um to embrace them into my reality or my world sure. i'm sure they're good people they they seem like they've got it together as far as following society's norm you know but um we don't all come from colon you know we come from colonization so we don't we don't all practice the same, the same uh, things, you know, like, you know, we were taught to to follow what they want us to know. And, and, and I think we come from other things that are, that are not, you know, that are kind of always trying to be veiled. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I guess, I, I don't know if there was a tradition of this in, in your family or not, but, um, um, did your grandmother or mother pass on like espiritismo or um, any kind of like uh, religious or spiritual traditions that weren't, um, you know, kind of died in the wool colonial Catholicism? Um, so our, our bloodline is, is, is I'm probably most likely Yoruba, right? Sure. And, and, or, somewhere around there, right? And and they they had a lot of practice of divination. And I think no matter how hard it was wanted or tried to be suppressed in our knowledge, I think it's still very present in us. We just don't know how to access it as well because we've been programmed to so many other and distracted by so many other things. Um, aside from from that, I I mean, she she practiced something because I remember her altars and stuff and her altars were awkward. They were like the Catholic saints, which were also like kind of uh, moved around and, and, and utilized to cover up other uh, entities, which are called, uh, what are they called? Um, it's like the practice of Santeria, right? Oh, it's, like uh, Orisha, Orisha. right? Right, yeah. right, right. So they were like Orishas. And, and she had her thing. I don't know how deep she was into it. And I think that maybe some somewhere along the lines, she may have gotten mixed up into some negative things that probably also caused a lot of uh, a lot of turmoil in, in her reality and in ours sort of ways. Sure. Um, but I definitely. Um, I've always tried to break away from religion and I've always tried to break away from that too yeah, right and yeah. I've always just my my path has always been like okay living the now and experiencing what life has been giving me at, at, you know in in those moments um so I I always steered away from that but lately I've I've you know for the last couple of years I've been really delving right back into it because I've been also developing the mysticism within myself sure and and so the the teachings that I've been learning in the last couple of years, like right now remotely, like I live in 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 well, I live in a place in California where there was a genocide, and I I live amongst uh, uh, native people that you know have always been on this land or sure. or to their to their knowledge, right? Because that could also be they could also have migrated at some point or their ancestors from somewhere else. Who knows? We don't. Right. Sure. Um, and 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 some of the things that I've been learning have been connecting me more to those sources and to those places. 
um, like there's practices that the ancestors have here that I I have been uh, attaining and and learning just through listening because I, I'm I I'm in nature I'm by myself most of the time as far as like uh, just just me in nature you know just me and listening to to the cycle of life and death you know, continuously, <laughs> yeah. whether it be through an animal, whether it be through an insect, whether it be through a person. Um, so I've, I've developed certain things in my spiritual path where I, I help thing entities or beings, whether animals or, or, you know, lingering beings cross over. And, and here I've learned a new technique which is uh, utilizing the womb. And so oh, okay. I don't have children. So I don't, I haven't brought any people into the world, but I have been doing a practice where I put people through my womb and give them a dignified, or beings that are lingering through my womb and give them a dignified burial. Because sure. a lot of times that's what's happening. Uh, well, who knows? I could be crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this shit feel hella real to me, you know? Yeah, and it's sure. really connecting me to source in a different way and giving me a definitely a different outlook on what reality is and life is and what we as human beings have been kind of distant, distanced from, you know? Absolutely. Like the sage and the magician and the and the and and those beings or archetypes that that we still in our psycho in our psychological realm have access to or in our consciousnesses right because we may have different consciousnesses you know who knows absolutely and it's it sounds like although you know the the roots and even maybe the distant childhood memories of certain practices were there for you it sounds like a lot of this is like your own journey um rather than like directly you know inherited obviously from um your right kind of thing you know, there was a strong connection between me and my mom, where whenever yeah. she was suffering, I would suffer somewhere else, even wow. if I was somewhere else, you know, and and even her tantrums, I would suffer her tantrums. And 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 it's just too hell of a weird thing that went on there all the time, you know, including this, where it's like her mom dies and my mom dies. You uh -huh. know, it's like, what the, you know, it's it's like, how do I make sense of this, you know? absolutely how do i make sense of this you know and 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 it's understanding these things you know and then it's like you know i did a ceremony for my mom where i pushed her through my womb and i had my dead father you know telling me okay push you know and and then i saw them dancing together you know wow could it be just a way of my psychological being saying okay this is how we're going to resolve this issue you know so that you can move on and that you can be at peace with her passing hey Okay, fine. Let it be that then, you know, but again, these things feel super real, you know, and, and I've had so many other kind of experiences where, where I'm like pushing these, you know, not, not, not in that way. I usually have a mantra that I say and, and, and I'll like walk and cross the street and find a bunch of money. You know, it's like, wow. okay, well, so I get like these confirmations as well afterwards, you know? Sure. So it gives me a, a, a sense of, continuously continuing to be grounded because it's something, you know, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So, you know, things, previous experiences throughout my life and having these experiences, whether in my dream state or in my wake state of helping things from here go over there or, you know, like has prepared me for this one. You know, Absolutely. this one has been the 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 deepest one for me because it's bringing me back to my ancestry and understanding like the divination and you know all of that that comes with the African culture and then I have the 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 native culture which is helping me connect to land and earth and creator here in that sense you know absolutely and there's like you know there's Spanish in me too and there's Moroccan in me too and and, and so that's like the you know those ancestors and the Muslim and and the Christians or or the Catholic or the Catholic you know people or whatever you know like I don't believe in in none of that religion is real in a sense of like how it has affected like the the reality of people nowadays you know I feel yeah. like you know we really come from something else not this separation. You know, sure. so I, I've always tried to steer clear from like religious stuff, you know. 
Absolutely. Because Absolutely. Um, I hope that makes sense. Oh, yeah. No, no. Entirely. Um, now, do you know, uh, did your mom ever share much with you about um, what led her to leave Puerto Rico? Did she leave on her own or did she leave with her mom or other siblings or anything? I'm not sure if she left on her own. I know I know her sister, uh, my aunt is in Jersey and uh, and my grandmother used to live in Jersey when we were younger too. And we would always go there when there would be any kind of like issues or again, like, you know, apartment change or whatever. Our parents would kind of just drop us off there. And we kind of like grew up there, you know, with sure. uh, with grandma and, and auntie, you know, and um. But she, you know, my mom was a, a a a life seeker. She she she, you know, she was she loved to dance. So she just wanted to, you know, venture out and and live 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 something and not be trapped in 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 what apparently my grandma's land was, which was a a very dense and and abusive area. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, I I grateful for both of them you know the discipline that I've learned from both my grandma taught me a lot of uh of, of focus you know like we would have to sit down and separate rice and beans and you know each grain and take the ones that are ugly out and uh -huh. you know for hours you know we'd get up at six and, or something like that and and you know she'd give us our our coffee and some like bread and and uh <laughs> and 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 uh and and we just take apart the you know spread apart the uh the little pieces of rice the little pieces of beans and make sure everything is nice and clean and no dirty little things or ugly little rocks or anything are in there and then you know we start cooking like at nine you know and uh -huh. it was just an all-day process thing you know so that 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 understanding of like how things take time or get into that deep level of of like really like getting into like finer details and stuff like that. Like I definitely gained from her. You sure. know? And then for mom, it was always more of a chaosy thing, you know, like my <laughs> mom definitely always had unconditional love for everything and everyone. Uh, she just loved dancing. She loved like playing her, you know, while she cooked, she would always bang her spoons on the, on the, on the on the pots, you know, and just very loud music all the time. And hey, 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 you know, <laughs> like so, you know, I, I, that, that a lot of that, you know, and always, you know, be nice girl, be nice girl, you know, and just like that, you know, that, that definitely, you know, that's definitely her and me, you know? Wow. Well, yeah, if there's, if there's one thing that people always mention about you, whenever you come up, it's your dancing. I imagine the way that you dance in the pit is a direct inheritance from your mom's spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you know she she was all into salsa and stuff so that was really that was really interesting bringing her to a show once you know and and her see the pit break out you know and she's all like oh my god they're fighting what's going on here and i'm like no that's how we dance you know and she was like that's crazy and i'm like oh, you know i guess we have a little of that in us <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I used to love the pit. That was that was that was where I let go of a lot of a lot of anger and pain. You know, absolutely, yeah. absolutely <laughs> healthy um, place, very healthy place. <laughs> um, now, uh, did your mom ever share with you, um, you know, her thinking behind, um, your name? Your name is a really beautiful name. Is it a family name or is it a name that she came up with or got from somewhere? Oh, Aphrodita, yeah. um, which is Aphrodite in English. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Aphrodita okay. is in Spanish sure. and in English is Aphrodite. Um, that was my dad's doing. <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah. So we all have kind of weird names, you know, or or goddesses and queens. Uh, sure, so Aphrodite sure. is a goddess of love, um, which is a very, very, very. Uh, it's not to take lightly. It's a, uh, it's a response. It's a it's a certain responsibility to have that name. Um. So I I you know that's why I I, I let go sometimes and I I become Gigi right like yeah <laughs> that's right. Um, 
but deep down in, in it, it is a, a, a very deep thing. My sister Nefertiti, you know, Nefertiti, uh -huh. Queen Nefertiti from Africa, the Nile. Um, Aramaris is another one, which is Mari. And sure. that's my mom and dad's name together because my dad's name was Aramis. I and my see. mom's name is Maria, right? What was the name? Sure. Maria, right? Sure. Mari Maris. And then Simara, which is my dad's name backwards, which I we never met. But, um, but yeah, she's still a part of us with, wherever she is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, why don't you talk some about, um, you know, the experience or your experience kind of moving around from apartment to apartment. It's something that I think, you know, is very common in New York and especially, you know, in places like the Bronx, people have to do that a lot because the apartments are bad or, you know, the the landlords or rent is too you know it, there's so many reasons but it's a very common thing but not a lot of people necessarily you know record their experience especially as a child going through all that so if that's something that um uh you feel comfortable talking about um yeah yeah you know um it it taught me detachment um, but it did suck a lot of times because you would like find a group of people or, or, or you would, you know, feel this space as a safe space and then you would have to go again, you know, and we did move around a lot. Um, you know, we would go back and forth from Dominican Republic sometimes too, or, or to Jersey, you know, yeah. or just back and forth from, uh, from, uh, the Bronx, Manhattan, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, moving around, I, I got used to it. And so it, it, for me, it felt like when I was placed in a place for too long and something was wrong. And I think that's why I, I you know, that's why I enjoyed touring so much too, uh -huh. you know, just always on the move, always seeing something different, you know, and, and, and also just like the, the, the keeping detached. You know, like I, I, I really do live my life pretty detached because of I never know when I'm going to go, you know, yeah. so I, I want to be able to go freely. I don't want to be held in in that realm, you know, for something so stupid as something materialistic, you know. Sure. Um. So it helped me understand that, you know, aside from like my dad not always being around was also another lesson of detachment, you know. Sure. And of course, I could beat myself over the head and psychologically be like, oh, they don't love me or this and that and that and this and or whatever. Or, you know, I could understand the lesson behind it because it is a deeper, uh, you know, it, it is a deeper thing than our ego. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, when you were growing up anyway, what was the like place where you lived the longest with your family, if you remember? Yeah, probably the Bronx, you know, um, there were a few different places, but like, I, 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 I always ventured out. So like the whole Bronx just became my home, you know, <laughs> and then Manhattan, you know, Manhattan became my home too. Now Spain sure. is my home. Now Northern California is my home, you know, sure. like it's, I, I've, I, again, like, I, I, I don't know if it's because of like how I, 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 or what I was experiencing growing up that gave me this perspective. But, um, you know, I, I don't, um, yeah, like I, we, we always, so the Bronx seems like the place, right? Like yeah. the, the place where I, I've got a lot of like my, my, my hardness from my, my, you know, my, my base really, you know? Like yeah. I, I, I like when, when I get upset, I, I like the Bronx comes out, you know, <laughs> like it's not, like, it's not like, and you know, you, you run away from it or you, or you try to put it away or something like that, but it's still very real place in me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my, my, so, my wife said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And so Freeman was, was one of the places, you know, Bristol was probably one of the places where 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 I lived the longest before before I left the Bronx again, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. And that was uh, the the neighborhood where Jose lived, the guitarist for Proof of Purchase. Uh huh. 
Yeah. That's right. Um, but I lived on the concourse too, like up by uh, at Edgar Allan Poe on Bainbridge and Kingsbridge as well. Oh, okay, okay. Right, we grew up in on Bainbridge and Kingsbridge area. Sure. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, but and then uh, like uh, Tremont area and Clay, uh, not Clay, uh, yeah, Clay Avenue around there. Clay Avenue, you know? sure. Yeah, yeah, that was like you know. When we were a lot younger, that was a, a rough spot there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, that neighborhood was crazy. There's always a war between the Jamaicans and the Dominicans. There, it was one day, you know, a Jamaican will drop, and mural will go up. The next day, the Dominican will drop, the mural will go up. You know, it was it was a very ugly place. Family got shot there. And, you know. Yeah, yeah. That time, at least. Yeah. Mid eighties. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask you to talk more about, you know, just what your experience of the Bronx was like during that time, but you've already you've already touched now a little bit on on it, you know, just experiencing that at a very early age is is a lot for any, you know, anyone, let alone a child to to take in. But what are some other things you remember um, you know, witnessing in the Bronx or, you know, experiencing in the Bronx, positive, negative, you know either way but things that you remember that were like characteristic of the Bronx at that time for you uh black parties uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> absolutely the black parties are fun um closing off the street everybody playing two hand touch football and uh pumps on everybody's getting sprayed by the pumps you know um uh loud music the DJs you know you know that was those those were the fun things. You know the good things of the neighborhood getting together, cooking. You know, yeah, and then and then uh, and just you know that said that sense of community. You know, but um, then then there were the shootouts at night, and you know there was always some kind of something going on that was very you know dark and negative. That yeah. that again, you know, like things that later on in life you don't understand how much affects you until you start really processing them you know sure. and that, and that and that stuff did affect me but it was so normal i didn't understand that how i was being affected by it you know absolutely absolutely um and i know you you talked some in the proof of purchase um interview you know about your experience at the drum corps and and all of that and um you know junior high school and beyond or junior high school anyway um but uh but do you want to talk some more about just what you know the public schools were like for you i mean in the bronx manhattan i know you're moving around some so it probably is a little bit of a complicated answer but um um but yeah what what was your experience like in the public schools at the time i i I had a couple of bullies. <laughs> um and that sucked. Yeah. But um I I I also always kind of just steered toward the music thing, you know, in, in the classes. I, I hated I hated I hated the classes. I hated the schools. Um I hated the information they were giving us. For some reason I always felt like it was like not always true or right, you know. Yeah. And this is just intuitively, you know, I've always been more of an intuitive person more than even a logical person, you know. Sure. Um, and so, but, but, you know, things, thing programs like that, you know, always kept me interested, you know. Um, but I always would fall asleep in school, you know. The teachers were, you know, also just people getting by, you know, yep. and understand, not under, you know. Like not understanding even why they have to teach these things, you know. At least this is, you know, I, I see a little bit of this now. You know? Absolutely. And our, and our public school system is not, you know, we're 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 teaching outdated, you know, information, and and uh -huh. a lot of it is even uh, un unprecise, you know. That's right. So it's kind of like you you're confusing, you know, a, a generation of people. You're confusing a generation of people, and you're con and and you're and you're adding to mental illness and instability absolutely you know by doing this and you know i i 
I, I, again, I don't know if I grew up with some kind of veil that kept me clear from certain things, you know, but in school, I just, like I said, you know, like the only things I would pay attention to would be like, I don't know, music, maybe gym, <laughs> you know, something, things that were active, like the stories sure. and stuff. Like I never, I don't know, history. I was like, mm, I don't know, you know math you know i like the math i like the science and stuff but you know i i'm i i dropped out of high school you sure. know so everything in in my in my world since then has been just straight on experience you know absolutely like the books don't teach you half the things that i've come across and having to understand you 100%. know and, and 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 life is life you know life is not the textbook like and no matter how much you read the textbook, unless you do the experiment or you have the experience, you don't really understand, you know. A hundred percent. Um when you dropped out of high school, were you like already living uh outside of your family home at that point? So <laughs> There was a time where where my mom had to leave the states, uh, and she, and so she, just left me <laughs> there. Um, my sister was with her friend, living at her friend's house, and then my eldest sister was living with her father, um, and his, and his family, um, and and so I just, I wound up getting a couple of friends to move in with me at the apartment and we tried to I tried to maintain it but it was under like a uh, public assistance so and and I guess they were paying it but I, I don't know at some point they stopped paying it because maybe yeah. my mom wasn't around to <laughs> and then um and then my friends destroyed the apartment <laughs> and I moved out <laughs> So at uh, and at, at a young age too, I I also like kind of always stayed at my neighbor's house, you know, yeah, since sure. I was like fourteen or something. But then I was like, you know, at that point I was like maybe like seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, yeah. And um, I I yeah, and then I had also another friend where I lived with him for a little while and his family, um, you know, one of my brothers and stuff, and 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 you know, they took care of me for a little while. And then, you know, I, I still had a little bit of the drum corps going on. So I, I you know, that was my summertime, sure. you know. So for a while after after that apartment, you know, I, I was I was homeless for a little while and just couch surfing and, you know, just trying to get by and make it looking for work. You know, I, I, I started working at a tattoo shop. I started playing music. I started working at rehearsal studios. I worked at pizza shops. I <laughs> um, book messenger, uh, for walking messenger. You know, I did I, so many things. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, when, when, when you got, when you got past that, um, you know, say that part, of your life and uh did you like were you able to move into a place of your own yeah uh, yeah i started i i like uh, i started renting rooms in the bronx there's you know the people that like just rent their rooms out a room yeah. out you know um and i you know started renting a room i think at that point i was like working in century 21 or something or abercrombie and fitch or something some retail stuff i don't know sure, my sister probably sure or put me onto it or something like she always does <laughs> <laughs> oh wow you know, she tries to steer me clear of the you know and and for some and and I'm grateful for that because if it wasn't for her like kind of always like you know putting her hand in there in one way form or other I think I would have been a mess you know I'd I have mean been a serious mess that that's that's a lot for anyone to handle let alone like a 16 17 year old I mean damn yeah but you know I had I had I had like the hardcore family, for example, yeah. already established where they were like, you know, they would do benefit shows to help me pay rent, you know, or, or, or gather money so that way I can like get an apartment or something like that, you know, sure. and, and that's, you know, like that's, that's, that's where I learned the value of like my street family, you know, yeah, absolutely. And, and because the house family was always kind of 
off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and 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 it's okay. I could be mad about it, but I'm not. You know, I I I appreciate it. I appreciate it because it gives me another outlook. You know, it yeah. gives me a better outlook and and just everything. You know, life Absolutely. is. You know, life is much more beautiful than we give it credit for. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, you mentioned that your older sister was living with um, uh, her father. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, I don't remember if that's also your father, but did you uh, maintain a relationship with your father um, um, throughout your life? That was a weird one, too, because he was always in and out of jail. Yeah. Um and when we would go to Dominican Republic, we'd be with him and his family and my aunts and, you know, uh, his father and, 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 um, and uh, I always tried to keep a connection with him. So after a while, like he would always be in and out of jail. After a while, he got deported back to Dominican Republic. So the only time we could go or I could see him would be, you know, to, to go visit him in Dominican Republic. And so when I would go, I would always try to extend my stay a little bit and just be there for a couple of weeks at least, you know, and just spend some time with him or whatever. But it wasn't as often as I would have liked to, you know. Yeah. But um, I'm living my life and I'm trying to also, you know, seek and, and you know, and venture. And, you know, so and he was always a traveler, too, and all that stuff. So. I really, I, I, I wanted to identify with him more than even my mom, you know. So I, I, I traveled a lot, and I would always send him postcards so he can see, you know, that I was, you know, just traveling around and 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 doing things, um, to deepen my knowledge, you know, sure. rather than you know, getting knocked up in the ghetto and having ten babies or something, which could have easily <laughs> happened, you know. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conditioning, you know, and the places that you are and how people are and how, you know, and how fitting in with the pack is really, you know, something hella real that goes on, you know. Absolutely. And if you don't break free from it, you you trap, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So um I did your did your mom eventually return to the Bronx? I guess you were probably already, you know, completely on your own at that point, but did she return? Yeah, she returned to the Bronx for a little while. Um, then, uh, and then, uh, um, you know, my sisters started having their families too and stuff. And then, and then, you know, her mom was getting older, so then she 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 went over to the to to Puerto Rico. I mean, after she saw that we were okay, you know, we were we were making it happen for ourselves. Um, yeah. She just dedicated the rest of her life to taking care of her mom. I see. I see. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so why don't you, um, uh, you know, I guess, are there other things about um, growing up in the Bronx that you think it's, uh, you know, important to convey? I mean, you know, a, lo a lot, of, a lot of things in the Bronx are still very, um, you know, kids growing up now, still a lot of parallels to the eighties, but not, you know, not everything. There's, you know, it, it, as much as people scaremonger about how violent things are now, like it's, you know, nothing compared to the 80s and, and 90s, of course, but, you know, just yeah. other things that you think are important. Zone in that chaos. So it's yep. like, you know, and then and, and it happens. That's, but, but that's, it's like in the Dominican Republic too. There's such a chaos in the streets. It's like, but it's, it's so calm to walk through. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it's a whole other kind of orientation, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, you know, the Bronx definitely uh was part of giving me this a solid coat, you know. Yeah. And and in an armor, you know, because it's it is like you know you you have to maintain positive throughout seeing all the negative that's always going around, you know, and otherwise you're, you know, you, you're just drowning in it. And that's, that's not a fun place to be, you know, and if not we can decide, you know, why not decide to, to kind of just bring, you know, 
bring better to it, you know, and, and, you know, do some community stuff, you know, build gardens. And, you know, I worked with Banana Kelly, you know, and they, and they do a lot of great things for, for, uh, for the community too, you know, and teaching and stuff. This is, this is where I learned most of my construction trade, you know, was working with them. And, and it was the first time I came over to California was with them actually as well wow. to do some work with some of their youth builds. And we just rebuilt some of California and uh, some of Santa Barbara and stuff like that. Uh, uh, some of like uh, Inglewood in, in, sure. in, you know, down in LA. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I remember you were, you were telling me um, uh, last time you were in town about all the different uh, construction skills you learn with Banana Kelly. It's incredible. I mean, they literally go into them and, and plenty of other organizations in the Bronx would go into abandoned buildings and completely yeah. convert them into livable yeah. spaces again. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And some old bars too we tore down and we turned into like community centers and computer rooms, you know. Yeah, wow. yeah. That was that was good. That was nice work, you know, rebuilding. Cause that 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 whole area was just awful. It was just like a lot of debris everywhere, just like broken, like burnt, you know broken down buildings and just, you know, and it was, it was cool to be a part of helping rebuild it, you know, in that way. And that's like yeah. real hands on, that's real hands on right there, you know, brick by brick. Absolutely. Do you remember any um, like community leaders that, um, you know, like might've mentored you or other, um, other children or adolescents, teenagers at the time, any names that stick out to you? I can't remember any names. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember. There was like a who she was Maria Santos, maybe. Oh, also, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was part of Banana Kelly. Uh-huh. You know, in that area. She was she was always really strong and fighting for, you know, a betterment. You know, I think she was also Latina, Puerto Rican, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh some, you know, some of the people just, just like part of Banana Kelly really did, you know, uh, have a positive, you know, force in me, it created a positive force in me, you know, sure. the same way with like a, a lot of like the, uh, the, the people in, in, in the drum corps as well. I mean, they were, they were also just people trying to get by and, and, and try to, you know, keep positive and, and do something positive for the community, you know, and keep the kids off of the streets and, you know, that, it was definitely, you know, like those people too, you know, but I, I, people that were like, you know, the politicians and all that stuff, like I'd never pay attention to them. No I'd way. Pay attention to the people that's doing, you know, that's right. And people like Jose Velasquez, you know, that, that worked and, and did a lot of work in, in the school 22 and in 147 and in those areas and brought those kids out to drum for, you know, and marched with the Lancers and, and, and Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club and all that and still continue to, 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 to reinforce and, and, and share positivity and through music with these kids, you know, like those are the people I remember, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Now you you mentioned a sec a, a little bit ago um, community gardens uh, I don't I don't remember if if Banana Kelly was involved in community gardens or not but I know there are so many other community gardens in the Bronx that were springing up at that time did you ever um, get involved in community gardens at the time No but what uh, what I did get into was uh, landscaping Ah okay. So Right. And so uh, we with uh, with this with the SYEP thing with the uh, drum corps uh -huh. and we would rebuild, uh, you know, and kind of also just landscape. We did a uh, Wards Island and Randall's Island. We just did some landscaping over there and stuff for Wards Island is the uh, uh, the, the where the mental institute is right. uh, and Wards Island and stuff. And that was with like the 77th Army Reserve. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah. I see. And so they were, I guess, a part of SYEP, the Summer Youth Employment. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. That yeah, makes yeah. sense. Um, and so we would do some work with them, and that will help us pay our tour account. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see. I see. Wow. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, you know, a along with, with members of the community restoring buildings and all that, the, the community garden element is another like awesome aspect of Bronx history that like, no, you know, no one outside the Bronx knows about just like, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's beautiful. I've been seeing a couple of things here and there too, in the last couple of years of it just getting a little better too. Like, you know, cause there were so many different lots, like empty lots and stuff like that. And yep. even like rooftops, you know, Yep. I think it's important, you know, to be able to learn to grow your own food. I work in agriculture right now as well, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it's necessary, you know, those, those, those are the things that put you in touch with earth. Those are the things that put you in touch with life and death. Those are the things that put you in touch with creator, you know, which is Absolutely. you and, and, and all, all around you, you know, and on all this technology is fine, you know, and it's helping us, but there's, there are ways to utilize it, you know? Absolutely. Um, and this natural way of, of, of being still and being an organic being and being able to grow your own food and, 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 or be a part of, you know, growing food for your community is important, especially, you know, how, how times are going nowadays, you know, we're, we're living from really special times. Yes, 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 we are. Um, well, yeah, I, I uh, was was curious about, you know, all of that with the community gardens, because I, you know, was going to ask you how you got into agriculture, if it went all the way back to to then, or if it, you know, is a more recent thing. It's a more recent thing. It's a more recent thing. I always like it wherever I would move. Like my mom always had a bunch of plants in the house and she yeah. always had such beautiful, like all her plants are always so beautiful and nice, you know, and pretty and and when I started having like my own personal spaces or my own apartments and stuff, I would always want to have a lot of plants and flowers and and just, you know. Um, so I started there, you know, and my balcony or, or backyard or, you know, or a little piece of backyard. <laughs> I don't know. I would build like raised beds and like this little thing that was like just concrete. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um no it's something that I was always just attracted to you know being yeah. I always thought I always like doing things from the ground up you know like like even production and stuff like that just to know how everything is like works you know so growing anything you know to me is is understanding a cycle is 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 understanding how to do things for yourself you know yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't, I want to grow my own food. Like, yeah, hell yeah. From this little thing called the seed, you know, it's like, it's amazing, you know? Absolutely. It, yeah. You see this thing, you nurture it, you give it your love, you watch it grow, it feeds you later, you know, it's, and it, and it, and it's a patient, you know, it takes process, you know, it's a patient process. Absolutely. Um. Well, well, uh, uh, well, yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing because, well, it's obviously come up in, in past, but, you know, we, we haven't even started to touch really on mute on more musical elements yet. There's so much, um, as you mentioned, so much to your life. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure there's so much more we could talk about, but, um, uh, before we move more into additional musical, um, parts of your history, are there other parts of your childhood or um, growing up or, or anything else that we haven't talked about yet that you want to share? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, there's always experiences I can share, but there's, you know, it's, if anybody wants to know, y'all can call me and ask. You know? <laughs> well, actually, I, 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 I got one more for you. This that's kind of related to agriculture and um and you know related to uh a story you told about your grandma making you sort um you know the 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 good rice and the good beans. The rice uh, and beans. <laughs> exactly. Um and and that's Final about traditions. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's about food and and what kind of uh um you know food practices that you uh remember as a child and have inherited and how you know you've shaped them in your own life as well 
I've again, I'm like, I've lived breaking the chains, you know? Yeah. So I don't, I don't indulge in meat. I don't indulge in death. I, uh, I try to eat as, as clean and, and, and life living things as possible. Um, so that, you know, rice and beans is still a part of it and platanos, of course, uh -huh. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, there's no meat. You know, so like all of the dishes that, that were done back then, like the pasteles and stuff uh -huh. like that, that were like, you know, the alcapurias and all that stuff uh -huh. that were always meat filled or, you know, those fritangas, all that fried uh -huh. food and stuff, you know, like the paparellas, all that good stuff, you know, right. I, 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 I make them with alternative meat, you know, sure. or alternative, you know, plant based, you know. Uh, situations like maybe tofu or even nowadays that we have uh, this new plant-based meat you know and all that That's stuff right. or you know it's 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 all just plants you know um i try to go straight to source always rice and beans you know sure. rice and beans is a complete protein greens you know i like my plate to look like a rainbow you know absolutely <laughs> and all the nutrients in you know supplements if i need them you know but 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 I think most importantly that I've that I've also learned throughout my personal journey is to be grateful for what I'm eating, give thanks to the food and 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 rise it up, you know, just to go into giving it some kind of intention to heal me, you know, sure. not just gobble it down and 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 kind of just you know not acknowledge that that thing has passed on and given its life for you to to have your strength, you know. Absolutely. Which is also something that freaks me out because, you know, we live in a society nowadays where these practices with these animals aren't natural and these animals are suffering. So it doesn't surprise me that so many humans are suffering because of how they're, you know, what they're putting into their system. You That's know, right. so it's like at least if you're bringing, you know, if you're buying in Sea Town or food, you know, or, or Food Mart or whatever, you give give thanks, you know, give thanks. And if even if you're doing the the organic grass fed stuff, you know, just you know, thank, thank, thank it. You know, it goes through so many hands of people that don't care about it. You know, at least give it some care. You know? Absolutely. You get you whatever you want. You know, just make sure you know you appreciate it because that's what heals you. Yeah. And was your um your journey uh to, uh to stop eating meat did is that more recent or did that begin when you were a child i know there's some that children who just maybe like know. 10 15 years ago or so okay. like between 10 and 15 years uh since i started my reiki practice okay i see I yeah see. just in downloads that were coming in through the those practices really uh helped me see a, a different way and understand consciousness um and again the the living and the dead world and all that entails with what is creation and um yeah um so i i just you know during my my practices we go through a 21 day fast at, at each level i'm i'm at a master level now um but during my first couple of initiations um Every time I would go back to eating food after my 21 day fast, I would notice how and how what I was putting in affected me. Uh huh. Sure. And so that also was a factor of helping me decide what was really going on with what my digestion was going through. Um, and so. But more after that was understanding, you know, what these animals are going through, this life and death thing, and how, you know, you are what you eat. So it's important to, you know, to feed yourself the right things. And not only in food, but also in knowledge and in what you're intaking visually and auditively. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and coincidentally, it happens to be a, a, a very hardcore, at least a certain strand of hardcore thing as well <laughs> right oh, uh, yeah the straight edge uh... like earth crisis and um yeah. you know all yeah, of that, yeah. but... was that, that that dharma punk i think that was a book yeah. that really turned things around for uh -huh. me that's i think when i first started becoming vegetarian 
Uh-huh. I uh, I delved into that book and and I was like, wow, this guy's got some real shit to say, you know. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah, his sure. name? Don Joseph. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, uh, there, there's some really like enlightened people that have paved, you know, and are still paving a really good positive path in in hardcore, you know, which is badass. I love I love to be a part of it. Absolutely. Um. Well. Uh. Uh. Just want to check in with how you're doing time is, uh, are you still good time? We're, we're about at an, at an hour mark now, but I, I have, I have plenty more time. Just want to check about you. I'm pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I set aside a few, few hours. Just okay. In case. <laughs> good. Um, so let's talk some more. I know you shared some, um, and maybe there's not much more to share. I know you shared some about your first band, the black metal band. Um, and I'd love to hear more about, uh, more about that. I mean, obviously the last one was, was more focused on proof of purchase. So that's what we spent the most time talking about, but, um, but yeah, black metal is not something, there, there's not a whole lot of black metal bands from the Bronx. Uh, there's a, a few that I know of, but, um, but it's so fascinating to me that that was your first band and would love to hear more about that. Yeah. Obscurity. I guess, I mean, we were, we were like based out of, <laughs> We, I mean, I was in the from the Bronx. You, you did. I think he was in Manhattan. Corey was in Manhattan uh -huh. too. I see. You I know. See, I see. Um, <laughs> and they, they were like my park friends. You know, because I would always cut school and like you know go either to Hunts Point and hang out in my friend's house, or go or and we'll go down to the city, you know, and go into Washington Square Park and hang out, you know. And I and I met these this family, you know, and. uh and and I would always just tap on the trains listening to, you know, my friends' music and stuff, you know. And so sure, I was sure. like, yeah, I can play drums, you know. <laughs> so they started renting studios and I just started playing with them. And my double bass was tight. I was like, oh, shit, I can do this. <laughs> that That's like a, a hard subgenre of, of metal to like, as a drummer, to like go go head first into two there's so many yeah I, mm. I tend to do that with things though so. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah yeah um, um what were yeah, some of yeah. the black metal bands that you or that the band was like listening to at the time do you remember <laughs> barely remember anything that we even wrote like it was just like a couple of a <laughs> couple of times of just getting together and uh -huh. and, and uh you know and and working through i don't know whatever the song riffs you know Corey and and judy would come up with <laughs> sure 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 and we, i think i remember is it your friend roach who was in that yeah too, right? Corey, yeah roach. oh that's yeah. Corey. okay, okay yeah I see, I see. yeah yeah he came and helped us with proof of purchase for a while too uh-huh uh-huh yeah um and you know just just uh for i guess a matter of record what where was the rehearsal studio i ask because i did an oral history a couple weeks ago with ryan and he had some very um uh interesting stories about a rehearsal space um that i think he was a security guard at and he, i think you maybe had rehearsal space there at one point too one that you know i think he said was super um there were there were definitely uh, uh, things going on in the rehearsal space, rehearsal studio that couldn't be explained, you know, as far as like spirits and things like that. Um, I don't know if it was that rehearsal space or not, but it'd be a fitting place for a black metal band if it was. <laughs> Man, they're all over anyway, everywhere. Yeah, it's stuff, true. You know? <laughs> like, I really wish I didn't see these things or feel these things and shit, you know, but but you know. Bless the ignorant eye, though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, man. I don't know. There's been... Right now where I'm, like, feeling haunted stuff, There, my, maybe that one spot in the Bronx, I can't remember. Oh, the music building. Ah, okay, okay. Sure, the music sure, sure, building, yeah. man. I think someone, like, threw themselves out of the, off of that shaft or something, you know? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I hung themselves there and stuff. There was some real weird shit going on in that building. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I guess I I I think I remember you saying this last time. Anyway, the black metal band was 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 a 
kind of short-lived thing it was short-lived yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah and then yeah. like my first real project was uh was proof of purchase that was proof like just purchase. like straight on in and like where where I felt comfortable enough to know that yeah I'm I'm a drummer now well, I'm, I'm still I mean you know, I'm still I'm still working on it <laughs> I mean I I may, may maybe I'm biased but in in the proof of purchase recordings you're already a better drummer than <laughs> a lot of a lot of drummers out there <laughs> i just i just have a natural knack for feeling i guess yeah yeah um and you all were already doing a lot of you know really interesting things musically but you just like kept up with that with another you know another dying democracy johnny cage is a fake i mean um i guess those those were really your next two a dominican day parade parade is a little later i think right yeah then a step too far a little later step too far too yeah um <laughs> but uh but yeah and you shared some about another dying democracy in the last um you know the, the the proof of purchase oral history but not a whole lot about johnny cage is a fake um right yeah yeah um and that and, was with will that's will, will ryan and uh and dean yeah right. man we fucking rocked we were so i good. know i know I love actually that band. I love the discipline in that band. We would practice like two times a week, every week. You know, we were just like, ah, we're fucking tight as a butthole, you know, like, oh, yay, you got right, one. Ryan, that's Ryan great. brought this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's great. That's um, great. That's great. Sell that shit on eBay for like 800 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like, like, like you mentioned, I mean, you're you're so tight. I still I mean, have I'm... some if people want to buy it. <laughs> oh, nice! Yeah, hit up, hit up, hit up, Gigi. Um, yeah, hit me up if y'all want one. But you know, I make special offers to special people. So if you really want one, it's got to be a relic in your in your in your collection. Otherwise, I ain't giving you nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you said, you're incredibly tight. I mean, you know, if, to play the kind of uh, heavy music that you all played, I mean, it's so like precise and. I, I don't know how you, I how you do it, it with the rhythms. I, I mean. loved it, man. That was like, wow. Like I, I, cause I, I'm a little bizarro like that. I like complicate. I like complexities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, I don't like just like the, you know, I think that's why I, I venture out to a lot of different things, but like, you know, playing with those guys, Dean, just his sound, Will, the way he would just like bring in the freaking, mm, the balls and shit, you know, Ryan uh -huh, and his uh -huh. freaking hop and screaming thing. It was, it just, it felt that like that I felt the most tied into, you know, like like the most like what felt the most that was purest that was coming from me. Sure. You know, because another dying democracy, I was playing justice songs and I was interpreting what Robin did, you know, uh -huh. until we started writing together. And then yeah, and then that became, you know, more more me. But with Johnny Cage from the beginning, you know, already it was just us four. You know, yeah. and that and 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 so the fact that they gave me so much freedom, like really helped me also grow as a drummer, you know, and then they, they always listen to the more chaos techie kind of like hardcore and stuff. And I got so into that, too. Like, it was so awesome hearing all those bands and all those like uh, and and like just, yeah, those drummers. I'm like, oh, my God, what are you playing and why and how and everything is one. Fuck four four, <laughs> fuck six eight. Everything is one, you know. That's <laughs> and so that was just that was it. That was it. You know, that just really like put me somewhere else. You know, which also helped me like when when because at at the same time I was writing with 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 um with another dying democracy. So they they influ they both influenced me to influence it. You know, I, I don't think that makes sense. Yeah, no, like no, working with both sense. of those bands because they were very different. Yeah. You know, they were still metal. You know, one was more towards like death, and the other one was towards like the math. You know, sure. But they were, yeah, man, they that they were they were fun. They were great. You know, we had I would throw up after shows because of like the energy. Like you know, broke so many symbols, so many sticks. People were like, people were. <laughs> People felt bad for me and would like give me their broken, like their symbols and stuff. On 
I'm like, no, you're not fighting with that one. I'm sorry. Here, use this, you know, and I'm so grateful for that. And I broke so many things. <laughs> it really did bring a different power out in me. You know, I don't know whether yeah. I was channeling the energy of the of of what was happening with the group, but that definitely was not just like my little ass, you know. <laughs> I'm like a hundred pounds soaking wet, you know, like or 125, you know, like. <laughs> and that was some hard shit, man. Uh huh. I know, absolutely. Powerhouse, you know. Absolutely. Um, and I mean that that style, like you know, there's there's definitely plenty of bands that play it now. But at the time, like you know, there weren't that many that were. There weren't even that doing many. Like who, that was there, who was influencing us? Or influencing me at that time, at least? Like what? Converge, uh, uh -huh. Ed Gain. Uh, what uh, what what is it? Uh, Dillinger Escape Plan, Burnt yep. by the Sun, those kind of guys. Burnt. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, uh, uh botch. You know, yep. those kind of bands like that. You yeah. know, they they were they were they were pretty cool, man. I, I ISIS. I like I like that whole vibe and shit. You know, sure, like I, sure. I I I listened to a lot of different things and stuff. But for a period of time, that like became soundtrack to my life. You know. Uh -huh. I and see. it's what taught me to kind of learn. It's what I heard to learn what I should be doing for Johnny Cage as a fake. Sure. If that makes any sense, you know? Sure. Um, one interesting thing that Ryan said about Johnny Cage as a fake, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it. He said that, you know, uh, the sound in general, but there are a couple songs in particular that stood out to him, um, that it kind of like captured for him like the experience of like riding us riding on the subway, you know, like through the Bronx, like, you know, just all the sounds and chaos and all of that all at one. I, I thought that was an interesting way to to um uh to look at it. But I don't I don't know if you have similar thoughts or um anything, but it, you know, interested to hear what your thoughts are on um the sound and its relationship to, you know, an urban environment like the Bronx and the relationship between the two i could see that i yeah. could see that it is you know bean had a has a has a really awesome way of writing he he, he was he, more than melodic even though he's like a very melodic person and 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 you know and and a great singer he 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 always went to pattern I don't know if you've ever seen Dean's art. No. Uh, well, I guess on the cover is one of his pieces, right? Uh, yeah, but you know, but that's that like, that, that that's, that's, that's not, not you know, yeah, 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 yeah that's like a yeah. replica of a king on, yeah. on a on a on a card, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. On on a deck of cards, but his he has like solidity and 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 sharp corners right rather than the wavy thing yeah that you may see in like you know some kind of like you know a core painting or something you know sure sure um and and that in in his music it's something like that too it's very very pattern pattern very that. you know it's but it's awesome. It's like it, it has its own place. It has its own pocket, you know, like you could see a trumpet drawn so many ways. But the way Dean drew this trumpet that hangs on my sister's living room is like, wow, you know, the way he, you know, the the proportion to like the perspective, you know, he'll go with a bigger hand and then some, you know, so you're like, wow. you know, you're seeing that, you know, and that's like it's his music was like that, too. And then Will gave it that bass and that and that that, you know, that that wideness and that heaviness to, you know, and I just kind of glued it together, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. With, 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 with how I responded to it, you know, which was like, okay, I mean, I want to hit every, every note that Dean's hitting, but I also want to keep to that emptiness or, or, or that space that, 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 that will is filling too, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And like, I, I I think I think you're you're drumming particularly on Johnny Cage of the fake, you know, like I, I can't even I can't even imagine. I mean, I, 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 I played drums a little in, in high school, but not 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 very much at all. But I can't even imagine, you know, 
how how you uh how you how you did it because um you know i mean there's a matter of of replicating the complexity of what's going on with the uh guitars and all but then the fact that there's just a consistent like groove tying it all together that i mean that takes some serious uh, skill you hear you hear some really mathy um you know music where the drums I mean, they follow the music, but there's not like that groove. There's not a groove. Do. That's that boogie yeah. down groove thing I'm talking about. Right? You can't take that away from us. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was playing with ADD in a park, right, yeah. well, years ago. And some, and some jazz guy comes up to me and he's all like, wow, you have like do you play other styles of music? You have like this certain back groove or something to what you're, I'm like, that's a, that's a boogie down groove. I don't know how to express <laughs> it. You know, but it's always going to be there. And, and it comes out in like whatever style I'm playing to and yeah. stuff. So that's kind of also like something that, that ties me into my individual being and, and puts me apart of like when I play drums with other, uh, you know, even if I'm playing for another band, yeah. you know, or or subbing you know people will know that it's it's my groove in there but yeah that boogie down thing you know and it's like yeah you know like i because i always okay again i i look at it in one you know what i'm saying and it's just like how do i want to feel when i'm listening to that part how do i yeah. want to like how do i want to go off in a pit you know so i'm just like i want to you know, I want to move it here or, you know, or I want to hop around or I want to go there, you know, and that's, I mean, that's my approach to music in general when I'm playing the drums, you know, how, how do I want to feel when I'm listening to it or how do I want to move when I'm listening to it? And that kind of what drives me into, you know, into how I create my patterns because, sure. you know, Johnny Cage was also just like self-created patterns, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you don't find those in your music books. No. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, you got to write a book about it. That's right. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, you left Johnny Cage as a fake uh, because you were starting some of your international travels. Is that right? I guess the yeah. first time? Or, yeah. Where... Yeah. That was some of it. Yeah, that was some of it. Um, I was also starting to work out here in California on the farms. I see, I see. And, and but I was only doing seasonal work here, and yeah. and um, I don't know. I I I I I had a a different idea. You know, I had an idea of you know working on the farms and creating the income to finance the project so we can stay independent. And sure. there was a, a, a an individual in the middle uh, wanting to separate me from the band, and um, and the band wanted to work with him, but he behind the band's back was trying to like get me to do some other stuff, you know, and to work with other projects in California and stuff like that. Um, so that was a weird, you know, and and he offered the guys, you know something that struck them, you know, and, and, and I had already come, was coming from this kind of like disillusioned state. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna not be a part of it. But then I had a premonition and I saw the guys in my premonition having a conversation behind my back. And then I grabbed Ryan by his little neck and I was like, what are you guys talking about? And they mentioned that they were talking to Alex about being a part of Johnny Cage is a fake, which also, which, which for me was an honor because Alex was definitely one of the first people to inspire me to play drums as well. And so that was really cool to see that, but I was also on my way to my new ventures and stuff like that. So it all worked out, you know, I and again, I was, I was also at that time going through some of that shift of enlightenment where things weren't making too much sense and I was like a little crazy for them at that point what with some of like the things that I would talk about or or come up with <laughs> I see and that's fine you know we yeah. all evolve in our certain ways and this is a this is me I can't hide this no matter how much you know you know I can I can try to but this is you know this this divination thing is a part of my life absolutely absolutely um and I think if I remember correctly, 
you spent at least a pretty significant amount of time in Africa, right? Is that right? I don't, I, I've gone back and forth a few times. Yeah. And yeah. I'm still, you know, journeying back and forth. I go there for more for, for, for learning the folk, you know, those stories that those rhythms bring with them, those syncopations, sure. because every syncopation is, is a different rhythm. It's, it has its own name. It has its own story. You know, and so like that's kind of what I've been dedicating my life to is sharing that information. Sure, sure. And it, it, is it is it particularly like um, Yoruba traditions that you have have drawn? Most of or... it is West African. Yeah. Most of it that I've been working with has been West African. Um, I do I want to get into other ones, other 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 subcultures and other things, maybe like the Senegalese stuff, the, yeah, the Sabah yeah, yeah. stuff. Probably, you know, but I'm still I'm still working on this stuff. There's so many rhythms. There's so many dances. There's so many, you know, it's 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 like it is an endless kind of. Not endless, I mean, up until now, because there hasn't really been much more created. Everyone sure. is just like kind of revamping what's already been done or 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 giving it a variation or something like that at least the new players and the new griots which are which are the 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 the, the masters or sort of say like the storytellers or the ones that you know the 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 information get passed on to right sure. which are like so you know um i learn i'm learning i'm you know from various different people i go to africa and i go and i do my work there with the people i do my work with the teachers you know i learn as best as i can so that way i can teach it as best as i can anywhere that i go and or you know have conversations with other people that understand the language anywhere that i go sure because it uh, is a language absolutely absolutely um and i'm i'm sure you must have at this point probably uh there's there's multiple drums that you probably uh have have picked up uh um there that you know you have a special attachment to or anything i don't know if you have any um there with you but uh always love to see you know people's like instruments that they're specially attached to if you have any um i i again i'm a very detached person yeah um including to my instruments um okay, yeah, but sure. i do i do love uh the balafone Okay. It's a very beautiful sound. I'm 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 also deepening my knowledge with that. Uh the dundunes, which are, you know, they're they're just, you know, skin on a log of wood, you know, and it, they come in different sizes. It gives you different sounds and melodies, you know, that you can build melodies with. Uh the Jimbe is also yeah, sure. a, a, you know, one that I've been uh, deepening my knowledge in lately as well. Um I'm I, I usually do more dundunes, which are basically more of the bass rhythms of of these rhythms and patterns. Uh Jimbe usually are soloists or their or their accompaniments. And a lot of the accompaniments would be the same if you're like in a binary or in a ternary kind of a rhythm. So uh, getting deeper with it would be to learn the doon doons. And so I dedicated well quite some time, maybe about now going on like, yeah, my 12th or 13th year of, wow. of just focusing on like, you know, I mean, there's been some time in between that where I've had to focus more on like the pop rock thing and, you know, working, sure. you know, that illusion, you know, but those roots are still always and going to be there. You know, right now, this is kind of what I'm doing here also in California is giving classes and, you know, playing for dance classes and just enriching that community with the information that I can bring in have I I, I mean I'm, I'm sure the answer is yes in some way or another but I guess it I guess it's you know exactly how be the question um you're you know deepening and developing uh practice in those traditions has that affected the way you pay, you play a drum kit um, oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. So. Again, it's like, you know, no matter how many books you read, unless you're playing it a hundred times, you don't, you know, you don't get it. There's, yeah. there's something about the African culture or the African uh, knowledge that I've picked up in, in, in playing that you don't feel in any other kind of music, but you feel in every, in every music. Right. Yeah, sure. Like there, there's a way of like feeling the rhythm coming down to the ground. 
Yeah. That helps you separate that space in between a little bit clearer. And 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 so it has a different feel because your left and right hand are both coming down even if you're playing an upbeat. And that alone has uh -huh. really solidified my timing. Uh, you know, I can play with a click track and, and you can take the click track off and I could still be pretty on point, you know, for, sure. for the most part. Um, with African percussion, what I've also learned is just like there's this series of rhythms that are in 12-8, which is just like, you know, everything is on the upbeat, but a double. And if you're like, you know, if you slightly off by a little bit, you you jump back onto the time. So, uh -huh. you know, like that, that really solidifies your understanding of where that pulse and where that vibration is that everyone's trying to create together. Wow. Right. Wow. Also understanding that no matter how simple your part is, your part in the in that collective in the community is just as important as the most complicated part. Absolutely. You know? And so with drumming now, I apply that. I apply, you know, the 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 polyrhythmic happenings when I play. You know, uh, I'm developing now a lot of those rhythms into the drum set, and I have a couple of video, a uh, few videos out uh, already on it. Of the G butter beats thing, you know, that I did a few years uh -huh. ago. But th that was and that was a while ago. You know, that was when I was first starting to really get into it. But I've like evolved from then to now, and I like I want to get back into that and kind of reiterate some of that information because time is time. And if you're in, you know, with African, West African stuff, everything comes on the upbeat and then goes into the down. And if you're feeling the, the upbeat as the downbeat, that song is going to be different. And so I want to make sure I put that timing in there for people. So that way they don't listen to it backwards and create another song. That's not supposed to be. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, and also just like my journey of understanding, like, you know, the, these places in time and space, right? That's that's what we do. We're like playing with time and space all day. You know, that's yeah. what drumming is. And understanding these syncopations creates these, you know, or or syncopating them differently. It's all the same pulse, but your, diff your different syncopation is what's creating the song, you know, or the language that we're speaking or communicating, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. The drums before, you know, they, that were that's what they were for, was for communicating from mountain to mountain, you know. Hey, someone's coming. Hey, these guys are, you know, take care, do this, do that, you know. We need this, you know. Now, and it's still, it's still the basis of communication nowadays. Absolutely. Like we're anywhere in the world. And anyone that knows Soli, which is a rhythm, yeah. we communicate. You could be Japanese and not know English. You could be African and not know English. You can be Mexican and not know English. And if you're playing this rhythm and we know we we can communicate through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really incredible. Um now now here's a Don't here's, shit. <laughs> here, here's a fun uh, speculative question for you. Um uh it, are you ever going to um bring uh you know straight straight up West African drumming, not just you know the drum kit influenced by it too hardcore um that's a, that's kind of what i'm working on now okay yeah right oh my right? god i can't wait <laughs> I, and i'm trying to piece it together uh, a way that it's going to make sense and going to really be innovative you know and give something new and something you know that's gonna that's gonna season our butts a little bit you know Cause it's like I don't know. There's like these 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 patterns and these you know like I can. Oh God, there's so. It's such an endless world of like rhythmic, happy joyness going on in my brain right now. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, because it's still like there's. I still feel that hardcore edge. Yeah. Right. I I I feel that funk. You know, and I. I feel that African also, and that and that African thing is hard, man. That shit is hardcore, uh -huh, you know. Like uh -huh. that's like not only in 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 its weight, but in its speed, you yeah, know. For sure, like, for sure. If you start playing African rhythms and you start playing them at the speed that they're supposed to be played in, you're playing death metal. Yeah, yep. basically, yep. you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's like when I found Af West African drumming, it was the closest thing to hardcore that energy that I felt in hardcore yeah. and playing hardcore music and that power that it gave me, you know, it, it was the closest thing I felt to it. I think maybe that's why too, like I grabbed onto that and maybe that's why I was also it was unconsciously grabbing onto the hardcore, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. 
Wow. I mean, and, and there's like that. It's oh, that hype. It's that hype, yeah. you know? Yep. There's a hype in it that it's just like, you know, you do all the pitter patter with jazz and and compress it all you want and stuff, but it's just like the explosiveness is 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 what we need sometimes too, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and there's there's some really incredible you mentioned death metal, really incredible death metal bands coming out of uh out of, coming out of Africa, like you know, in the last 10, 15 years, even like oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, no, I wanna, I wanna, I definitely wanna tie that stuff in. This is this is some of the practices and works that I'm working on right now and stuff like that. You know, I don't really talk too much about it because it's still, you know, I'm still working on manifesting it and and bringing it into fruition. But I want it to make sense, and I want it, you know. You know, and, and maybe I'll do it, you know, maybe through G3, you know, which is that project that I'm doing, which is also incorporating a lot of electronic to it. But I still want to have, you know, I want to I want to I still touch base on all of those roots that kind of like made me who I am, you know, Absolutely. including the hardcore, the punk and the metal, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, I think I, I forget the, the name of the band. I don't have my... Um, the notes I took on this right in front of me, I, they're buried in my computer. But um, uh, did you also play with a band in the Dominican Republic? Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With some Cincio. of the broom, some of the broom Hilda guys, right? Some of the right? Hilda guys, yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Jodido loco sucio. That that um that that was awesome too. That was like okay, a modern day Black Sabbath in Spanish. <laughs> wow wow yeah leo with leo i learned a lot too like working with leo and playing with leo and he would come in and out of my reality and stuff but he would always come in and and always grab me and be like come play with me you know and and i'm grateful for him too i mean he's my connection in spain too this is one of the reasons why i went there i see, um, I see yeah 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 and that that was fun uh again like you know having to listen to to the drummer that they had guy from which was uh which is also the drummer for juan luis guerra i don't know if people are dominican they know bachata they know juan luis guerra you know uh -huh. and and so he would always be touring with him and so i would be his replacement drummer on, at, with the jls stuff uh, and so there was a tour, you know, there was some tours that he couldn't make it to, some shows that he was unable to make it to. And Leo would just call me up and me and my little crazy ass be like, come on, let's go. Let's go play this. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you yeah. did you record with them at all? Yes, we did. We did put out um, we did put out Crudo, which is a live show in Spain and in a, in a civic center in Spain. And um. And I think I recorded with them maybe like like half five five or six songs in Mako Jones, which is uh, another record that he has out. I think he has a, a few out, you know, a couple more before that, and then a few after. Yeah. Um, um, Mako Jones, which is if you're Dominican, you know, is Mako Jones, you know, uh -huh, if you really uh -huh. know that well. <laughs> You know, Leo is like that, but Leo is my Nietzsche, let's just say. <laughs> he is. He is. Mm -hmm. He's a very wise man. Very wise man. I learned a lot of uh, wisdom with him. Uh, sure. Indirectly and directly, you know. Sure. Working with him is always, a, is always a pleasure. I still have contact with him. We're still good friends. And, and if he ever needs me, he knows he can count on me. Wow. Um, and... I, I know you you've played in so, in so many bands are are there um are there other bands that you want to mention that you've played in or you know um that we haven't touched on yet then step too far was fun step you know far, those course. guys yeah, really put me, you know put me on the map in the hardcore scene in the in the New York City hardcore scene you know um, I really appreciate playing with them, like, you know, with Frank. Frank's such a good guy, too, and, and Carlos and Gio and stuff. Again, just a really good family of people that took me in and that just, like, always, you know, supported me and, and, and gave me a reason to, you know, to drive forward, you know, whether it was to go to practice or because it made Frank happy that we were going to play with these bands, you know, that, that he idolized or, or respected, rather, you know. And sure. that to me, you know, making making people's dreams come true is like 
for me has been, you know, my journey or, or what I get the most satisfaction out of, you know. Dominican Day Parade was also a really fun band, you know, working with those guys was really cool too, because that was kind of a full circle thing because they were guys that were influencing me growing up, you know, and then like playing with them was like, oh shit, like fucking Lenny and Nando, you know, Pete the Meat, fucking No Redeeming Social Value, we used to <laughs> play course. for it. You know, those, you know, that that those are, you know, all bands that 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 helped me through my through all of my, you know, negative moments, you know, and, sure. and, 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 and kept me in positive, you know, places, you know? So I, and, you know, those, they were, they were fun, you know, like with, with, uh, with Dominican day parade, that was just a mess. We were just a drunken ball of mess. <laughs> no, you know, all of us. And then purposely, you know, <laughs> we were like, fuck this, you know, <laughs> life's a joke. This should be too, you know? Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> you know yeah no they opened my eyes up to that which was really cool i needed that and i appreciate them for that you know it's like yeah definitely shit's um, hard but let's let's fucking you know enjoy the shit and let's just rip everyone off no. <laughs> absolutely that was, um, you know that was our gimmick that was what we did we would you know name the songs after the bands we ripped off but you know it was also <laughs> kind of like you know giving giving respect to those bands in a way course. you know yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, and you you mentioned bands that you know shaped you while you were getting into the scene and all. Uh, um, uh, just wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about District Nine now. Um, you know, and uh, how District Nine shaped your uh, musical outlook. Did you ever had have a chance to play with any of the District Nine guys? Uh well yeah Lenny you oh know, Lenny, Lenny of course yeah Lenny yeah 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 Lenny played yeah. with District for a while Todd you know I, I, I um let's see yeah 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 Lenny basically uh because Caesar was you know he would always be in and out and stuff yeah sure but yeah yeah, yeah. how they shaped me man like again that that again that's just like those positive words like Fahrenheit, you know, like, you know, we're all coming from this freaking ghetto and we're all coming from like these places where, where it's just like, if we don't stay positive and talk about it, you know, we, we're, we're going to get eaten alive, you know, and we've all been through our share of some really freaking nasty bullshit, you know, and, and, and substance abuse or alcoholism or, or, you know, and, 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 or, or other, you know, coping mechanisms you know that 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 caused addiction or violence you know but we 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 being able to talk about it through the music being able to unleash the anger through the aggression in the music you know for me was something that really did you know help me get through like all of all of what I was going through and 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 seeing you know because that's you know there was abuse everywhere. There was abuse everywhere. Absolutely. You know, a time in, in, in my life where, where, you know, I, I couldn't cry without, you know, one of my cousins beating on me, you know, and, and that, that affected me because, you know, crying has always been difficult and, and, and we should be able to express, you know, and, and so those things in our psycho, you know, in our psych, Psychology and how that starts building and, you know, the patterns we start connecting and the neurological connections, you know, all that shit, you know, it affects us. It affects us it, and it takes us towards these paths, you know, but, you know, bands like that, you know, help a lot of people, whether they know it or not, whether they know it or not, you know, I'm saying it for me, you know, like those bands with those positive messages through those dark times have helped me and are still helping me because I'll still throw on Fahrenheit 451. I will still throw on District 9 from time to time and be like, yeah, fuck that. Hell yeah. Uh -huh. Give me that fucking power. I need that shit right now. You know what I'm saying? To push Absolutely. through this hard time that I'm dealing with. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh and Fahrenheit coming out with new with new stuff too, so which happy. is really cool to see. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um but uh but yeah, well, um, so I know you already kind of uh, um, mentioned like, you know, what's next or at least one of the what's next, which is, um, uh, you know, West African 
drumming and and hardcore and um seeing what emerges from from there but are there are there other um kind of things in your immediate uh future that you're working towards that you want to share uh well aside from the g3 project um uh is this writing a few books oh wow yeah about some experiences and and just some fictions and non-fictions so i'm in the process okay. of that too yeah wow um, you also mentioned before about a band uh uh I, I I'll mention one of the projects that I had in Europe that okay, I yeah, um, sure. that uh was relatively like pretty cool, you know, um that I did a lot of work with and for uh which was Vicky in the Wild. Um that that was a really cool project. Um just Vicky was a very awesome is an, is a very powerful woman and 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 uh having her lead an example for me for during a period in my life I I appreciate and um same with Jess from another dying democracy and uh, you know um so I I just want to give her a little recognition in, in this and 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 introduce her to to this world um because she 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 she's a warrior you know, that fights for what she wants. And um, unfortunately, my my being uh, after COVID, you know, I had to make another decision of, of like what's more important to me. And I chose my life rather than, you know, rather than hers. And um, sure. but Vicky in the Wild, you know, it's a it's a really cool project. You know, we have some videos out. There's a there's a record out and stuff that we put out called uh, I think. Uh, Oh, I can't remember the name of the record. I, I'm so bad at this stuff. <laughs> oh no, that's that's fine. Um, but Vicky yeah. in the Wild, you know, that's some of the most recent stuff that I did in in Europe. Um, and there were a couple other projects I worked with here, but they didn't really get too far. It's really hard working with people out there musically. Um, but but I, I I appreciate that too because it has given me the strength and the and the and and the inertia to push myself forward to 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 delving into this other landscape, you know, which is the production stuff, and then you know, creating a solo album and stuff. Absolutely. And what 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 kinds of um, uh, sound uh, went into Vicky in, in the Wild? For those who haven't listened to Vicky in the Wild before, it's hard rock. You know, okay. kind of like felt like the nineties alternative rock. Okay, sure, sure. You know, yeah. It feels like that, you know, but but it's cool, you know, it's cool. Yeah. I don't know what they're what they've gone and done in the last couple of years and stuff, but the record that I'm on and stuff, give it a listen. You'll like it. Absolutely. Um now, uh here's a here's a fun question for you. Um uh hopefully a fun question anyway. Um, what are some of the songs or albums um, that are like on your most listened to list right now? Well, whatever genres, whatever oh, genre. See, because okay, I'm like I live off grid, right? <laughs> see, I was, I was, get, I was thinking about that when I, I asked. I stay away from everything, right? Because yeah. I want like a real, pure kind of download. You know. Yeah, sure. Of, of like my clear audience and what I'm listening and hearing, you know, and based on like what has influenced me or whatever. But um, until recently, because I accidentally broke the CD, <laughs> cleaning it, <laughs> has been like Tool, Fahrenheit, um, okay. some, what else? Um, Animals as Leaders. Um, yeah uh aside from that just like going back into like studying these african west african rhythms so i'm like you know listening to these teachers like you know babara bangura and mama Diketa and stuff like that um but yeah you know like yeah more than anything else i keep going back to the hardcore metal or punk stuff you know uh here and there maybe i'll get into like some kind of like uh more soul neo soul stuff Sure. You know, that stuff is fun. I, I also do like, you know, my cover songs and stuff like that. I have like those two projects that I do in Spain sometimes, which is the Brick House, 
which is like a funk rock cover songs and then the the uh the the uh the green honey which is more like the neo soul blues and stuff you know i got i always get like some really nice players to accompany me and stuff and we just you know they just help me in my adventure <laughs> they're so great too uh they, yeah yeah so you know i i i Mainly, you know, songs that I may want to put on my set list as far as, uh, you know, what I've been listening to lately, you know, sure. and I don't know, not not too much, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I Again, like I, I need people to like put me on to music. I need people to be like, Gigi, listen to this. Otherwise, I don't I'm, I'm such a bad seeker. You know, sure. I should be better at this because I'm a musician and I, and like that's what I should be doing is just like listening to music, especially also with production, you know, because just understanding the soundscape. But. But, yeah, I I always. I don't know. It takes me a while to find new things and and or I'm like I, I like random you know, just put sure. things on random and just kind of like, OK. And then if something pops out, I'm like, oh, let me look further into this. But sure, sure. as far as me, like, finding and looking, I usually people put me on. Sure. <laughs> and right now, no sure. one's putting me on to anything. So if y'all got some real cool shit to listen to, go ahead and pop it in the, in the what is it, in the, in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, uh, so I think, um, I think I, I got one more question for you, but you know, if, if there's other things you want to talk about, we can obviously do that. But, um, but the final question I have for you, which there's a kind of variant of this, which we already talked about in the last one, but this is slightly different. Um, what does the Bronx mean to you? What does the Bronx mean to me? Yeah. The Bronx to me means that time and place that created a part of me. It means to me the struggles of staying out of negative and pushing myself towards positive and maintaining myself in a place to be able to shed that light with others as well. Um, it's taught me and, and continues to teach me the importance of community, no matter where I go in the world. Um, I always look to build a community around me, um, whether it's just a street community or families, you know. Um, the Bronx is, you know, it's, it gave me that toughness that I need to, to get through this life in this world a little bit, you know, because, you know, a lot of places it's, is there's, there's either more fucked up things going on or less fucked up things going on, but there's always some kind of something going on out there, uh -huh. you know, and, 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 and being able to, surpass it and kind of just be able to you know stay in light uh, you know it's all about staying in light and so coming from the bronx and seeing all that dark you know or experiencing it and and still experiencing the joy inside of that dark in uh -huh. the bronx you know was is 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 where it's at for me you know Cause you know you all shit was going on in the house, but you go downstairs, you know, you go get a forty, you know, at the store, sit down in the back of the school, smoke a blunt with your friends, laugh uh -huh. about shit, you know. Absolutely. Like those little things like that are, you know, you don't find that anywhere else. I can't go and freaking hang out on a stoop here, you know, <laughs> and just have a forty and smoke a blunt with someone, you know, <laughs> and just be like okay with talking shit, you know. <laughs> Like yeah, the shit talking is like you know everybody wants to be so correct and so PC and so this and so that. It's like man, for real, there's more. There's more to life than this, 
And and not only is there more to life than this, is just like laugh, laugh a little bit, you know, for because sure, it, sure. you know, there's always gonna be light and shadow, but just laugh, yo, just <laughs> you know, you know, take it like a grain of salt and and push forward. It's like I, this is what it is. Absolutely, absolutely. I I lied. I actually have another question for you, if that's all right. Um, it's all good. Sorry for being a liar. Um, oh no. But, uh, <laughs> um. So when when we were at the fair, oh no. <laughs> when, when we were at the Fahrenheit show, I guess in April, right? That was April. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the cool things about that show, and I I feel like. I feel like hardcore in general now. I mean, this was always the case in the Bronx, but just how many like young hardcore kids of color like are are there now? And you know, you you see like hardcore bands from all over the the U.S. Anyway, I mean, not of course in the world that's the case, but um, you know, that's increasingly seems to be the trend in in hardcore. And like I said, in the Bronx was always that way, but just wanted to hear your thoughts on like that development in the hardcore scene and um, where you hope the, the scene goes in the future. That's, I mean, I, I think it's great. We need to see all colors. We need to see white people, black people, brown people, yellow people, you know, it don't matter. Uh -huh. The red people just get all up in it, you know, Green it's people. a place and it's a space <laughs> that's being created yeah. by these people so that we can like, you know, unify and so that we can enjoy these moments and enjoy this music and enjoy the pit and you know release this energy and you know make friends and you know talk about you know our previous shows bands you know I've, you know it's that's what that's what being human is you know that that contact that communication that that just like having things in common with others and stuff you know that's that's part of what our ego likes you know, and so sure. we we're living in a in a dimension where ego leads. So let's you know, I want to see it keep through. You know, keep growing and 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 becoming and 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 you know, and yeah, we could we can keep to to the style of music, you know, but you know, don't be afraid to innovate inside the style, you know, because that that that's what also keeps it going and feeding, you know, the 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 newer youth because our, you know, generations are always going to change, you know. What my parents listen to to what I listen to, you know, to what my nieces and nephews are going to be listening to or whatever, you know, to what our grandparents listen to. It's, you know, will change, you know. But, you know, hardcore has its roots, right? And it's a lot of gospel beats. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know. That's right. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and so, you know, just keep evolving, keep playing, keep doing it. You know, keep creating it. It's a beautiful thing. You know, and just keep creating it. I mean, now maybe we don't have as much pain to suffer or, or suffering to, but but there's you know you could always make music that feels good. You know. It yeah. doesn't always have to be just about being tough or or living through a struggle. It doesn't always have to be, you know, it could just be about freaking, you know, eating a burger or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> a vegan burger. <laughs> like, right. Who cares? Just make it feel good. Just express yourself and freaking, you know, if that's the genre that loves you for it, then that's the genre that loves you for it, you know, but, you know. I always encourage creating your own. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Well, um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we, um, you know, call it quits for today anyway? And, you know, it's, if, if more things occur to you, we can always um, record more later, of course. But uh, as far as today goes. And I think we covered, you know, I think I think I said what I have to say. Um, I think um, I just want to give thanks to all the people that are part of my journey, you know, everywhere in the world that, that know me, that support me, that care for me, um, that help me, uh, feed me, clothe me, <laughs> you know, I have so many friends that give me clothing, you know, it's like, I barely have to buy any and I'm so grateful for that, <laughs> you know, um, but things like that, you know, like just, um, all the communities that have been a part of my life, um, and all the people in it, 
the hardcore scene, the punk scene, the metal scene, the hip hop scene, the break dancing scene, the you know the the funk scene, the you know every everywhere, everyone, you know, just really thank you, thank you all for for giving me strength to keep going. You know, um, it hasn't been an easy journey, but I I um uh, I make it look easy. <laughs> for sure and it's and it's thanks to you know to people like you all that that are uh, constantly checking in on me or or supporting what i do and um so endless gratitude well thank you so much i'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording right on